Good morning, and thank you very much, uh, Yossi Vardy, for that uh, generous introduction earlier. And also, uh, I want to say how honoured I think we all are up here uh, by the pres presence of uh, President Parrish this morning. Uh, <clears throat> I'm delighted to be here in Jerusalem to help you celebrate the 60th uh, anniversary of the freest society in the Middle East. I'm confident about your future because I believed that the future <clears throat> belongs to freedom. And I'm delighted to share this panel with four such visionary business leaders. But before addressing the subject a little, I just want to say how exciting uh, it has been for me to return to Israel after uh, too long an absence. Uh, since landing only two and a half days ago, uh, I've walked the streets of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Um, I've had a helicopter tour of, uh, to see the amazing developments and physical growth of the country uh, and also the privilege uh, to meet and talk to uh, so many of your leaders. Uh, and one cannot help but be moved by the sheer passion uh, of the whole country. Now our topic today is the revolution of the internet and the effect this revolution is having on media and society. Every day we read about the effects <coughs> in our business pages. That's because technology is destroying obsolete business models based on the one-size-fits-all approach of their customers. Today, the choices <coughs> in the future are going to be generated from the bottom up, not the top down. For example, a 13-year-old girl in Tel Aviv is not going to want the same news and entertainment as a 50-year-old executive in Chicago. And they're probably going to want it delivered in different ways as well. Our challenge is to personalize the experience uh, for both these people, indeed for everybody. Every day that someone is coming up with some technology that can do this, that is allowing the little guy at a home computer what it once took a huge corporation to do. That is making business more and more competitive. And it is helping media companies like mine develop you know, a truly global reach. I know that some people worry about these changes and become pessimistic about the future, but I have a different view. I believe we are on the cusp of a new golden age of information. I believe that this golden age will <coughs> make the, hu the human element more important than ever before. And I believe the, <coughs> the advances in the transmission of knowledge and information through the internet give us a tremendous opportunity to transform whole regions of the world. So today, I'll address the three subjects. First, I'll talk about why technology is a good thing, despite the unsettling changes it brings. Second, I will discuss why technology is making human capital much more important. And finally, I want to suggest that by expanding knowledge and information throughout the Middle East, we can make the 21st century an era of peace and prosperity for even this part of the world. Let me start with the technology. It is true that technology <coughs> is challenging accepted ways of doing things. That means that companies like mine have to work harder for our customers, as readers and advertisers. The history shows that each improvement in technology, starting with the printing press, has opened up access to more news and information and entertainment for more people who previously couldn't get um, or afford it. History also shows that each new advance in technology has forced businesses to become more creative and relevant to their customers. That's a wonderful democracy at work. Everyone in this room 
can see the result in, your, in, in their own lives. Today you can read newspapers from the, the Jerusalem Post to the Times of London online without paying a nickel. You can access whole libraries from your desk. You can have information delivered to your cell phone whenever you want. The technology that makes all this possible helps you become more efficient and helps companies like ours serve you in more and better ways. But the right technology <coughs> will do you no good if you do not have the people who know how to take advantage of it. So, <coughs> so to maintain your competitive edge, you need smart people and you need them more than you ever before. You need people who see the big picture, who can think critically and have strong character. Today's economy gives great rewards to people who have these skills. Economists call these skills human capital. And as technology levels the field, it is making this human capital more and more valuable. You Israelis know this from your history. Human capital helped to carve a modern and dynamic society out of desert. Human capital makes up for a lack of natural resources. Human capital makes you a technological center uh, and, uh, <coughs> and a leader in the whole competitive world. Businessmen know this too, as we've heard t today and have just heard uh, from Ms. Bloom. So if you ask the, the leaders of the most cutting edge corporations what, <coughs> what their priority is, it is not finding the right technology. It's attracting and retaining people who will know how to create or use that technology. Let me give you an example that is close to home. One of our companies, of which we're most proud, is called News Data Systems. It was started up in 1988 by four people in a Jerusalem apartment. Today, NDS Israel employs more than 3,950 people worldwide. Uh, with more than 1,000 people here in Jerusalem alone. I think it's the largest R&D high-tech center in Jerusalem. I spent yesterday afternoon uh, with these amazing people seeing some of their new products and what they're working on in the field of encryption uh, to staggeringly powerful but cheap home data storage devices. NDS plays a vital role in our company. The technology that NDS has created has made our satellite dependent co uh, companies possible. NDS technology is used in more than 82 million devices in more than 35 countries. We use NDS technology to secure our content and deliver that content to our customers and help our customers access it. News Corporation is proud of our presence in Israel and we look forward to a long and happy future here. <laughs> Yet as we look to the future, we need to be more ambitious about the opportunities before us. We will continue to do what we can to help Israel <coughs> maintain its competitive edge. Yet we must also look for new ways to expand human capital throughout the Middle East. When people have the skills they, they need to build better lives for themselves and their families, their societies will become more peaceful and Israel will have better neighbors. Uh, building lives of hope and prosperity and peace begins with expanding knowledge. There are tens of millions of talented and hardworking individuals 
across the Middle East. Many live in countries rich with oil, but they lack the education and know how necessary to take advantage of the opportunities of this new century. So they remain on the fringes of the global economy. We can change that. For the first time in, in history, the, international, uh, the, the uh, internet related technology has given us the means to disseminate knowledge and information cheaply and efficiently. By disseminating this knowledge, I don't mean spreading propaganda. I mean helping ordinary people access the knowledge that they can use to improve their condition and move up in society and keep their nations competitive. The best way to do this is by improving education. That is one reason that I've agreed to serve on a task force of Israeli and American business leaders. This task force, which I'm uh, proud to announce this morning, will study the viability of a new, uh, under the leadership, I might say, of President Paris, will study the viability of a new private high school designed to cultivate a new generation of Israeli leaders. very happy to say we've already recruited uh, business leaders in America, uh, such as Mr. Leslie Wexner and my friend Mortimer Zuckerman. If we do our jobs properly, such a high school will be a model for the whole Israeli education system and will help guarantee a brighter future for all its citizens. The task force is due to report back uh, with its first report in three months. At the same time, I believe we need to do more to bring these same opportunities to all those across the Middle East. Recently, the World Bank issued a report saying that while the countries of the region have made progress in recent years, their education systems are just not keeping up with the demands of the 21st century. Most of these countries also have very young populations. And unless they get the skills and education they need to advance, they'll be more susceptible to those preaching violence as the answer. So we need to refashion and reform our foreign aid programs to focus on literacy and education. And the private sector can help by showing what works and what does not. All around us, we can see how a focus on skills and education has helped Israel to prosper and maintain its freedoms. To keep Israel's future free, we need to help people across the region achieve the same results for their countries. The miracle of the internet has given us the technology. We know what works in education, and we know the, the human talent that is just waiting to be tapped. By giving people across the Middle East the education they need to succeed, we will provide an alternative to violence, and we will help millions build a more hopeful future. And we will usher in what Israel has not yet known in its 60 years, the security that comes from having neighbors who are free and prosperous and peaceful. Thank you very much.